The SS Belt Buckle, officially known as the SS Mannschafter Koppelschloss, was a distinctive belt buckle worn by members of the Schutzstaffel SS, a paramilitary organization under Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. The SS was initially established as a small elite unit within the Sturmabteilung SA and later evolved into a powerful and influential force within Nazi Germany. The SS belt buckle was part of the standard uniform for SS personnel of the Allgemeine SS, later the Waffen SS and had a unique design. The front bears the Imperial Eagle with swastika and the inscription Meine Ehre heißt Treue, which means my honor is loyalty. The basic shape remained unchanged until the end of the war, but the material of the belt buckles varied during the course of the war. In this video I show you the different manufacturers and types of the SS enlisted man belt buckles as they were produced until the end of the war. There were over 50 different variants of manufacturers, which is I only present the most common ones in this video and go less into detail about unmarked and prototypes. There were 5 types of belt buckles produced in 4 different materials, let's start with the earliest one. It is believed that the first SS belt buckle produced was manufactured in 1927 exclusively by the company Overhof und C in Nickel. In the collector scene it's called the full title Overhof because of the full inscription Overhof und C Lügenscheid gesetzlich geschützt. Gesetzlich geschützt means protected by law. It was made out of nickel and was 47.5 mm wide. This first type was probably produced until 1931 when other makers joined the production due to the raising demand of belt buckles. From 1931 to 1936 there were various makers producing the Type 2 nickel belt buckle. Overhof still produced nickel buckles, their stamp however was in the first years shortened to only O und C gesetzlich geschützt, which can be found with different capitalization. This piece is by the way from my personal collection. The convex shape of those Overhof buckles is typical, other manufacturers produced flatter shapes. Note the left wing without rope and the two stripes below the letter H. Those Overhof buckles are the most produced and most common of the nickel type. In the year 1933, Overhof still produced those buckles, but without their name stamped on it. They used the RZM code RZM24. You can recognize the Overhof by comparing the letter's age from the previous buckle. They both had the two stripes underneath them. Also note that Overhof started using a rope between the left wing and the head of the eagle. In 1935, Overhof started using their late RZM coding until the end of the war, the RZM 36. There are two pieces from the nickel era known, the 3536 and the 3636 stamp piece. The first number contains the year and the second the maker Overhof. For all new collectors, RZM stands for Reichszeugmeisterei, which means National Material Control Office of Nazi Germany. During this time period there were other makers than Overhof producing nickel belt buckles. RZM57 was the producer M. Winter, which stands for Martin Winter. The first variants contained only the RZM57 stamped near the catch. The same specimens, overstamped with a gesetzlich geschützt Muck mark, also appear. It is believed that MUG represents one of the cooperatives who produced small metal objects called Arbeitsgemeinschaft Metallwaren und Kunststoff. Other pieces only had the gesetzlich geschützt mark overstamped. The RZM63 SS buckles were also originally produced by the RZM57 manufacturer Martin Winter. This was done because Martin Winter lost his RZM contract and thus had to sell his inventory. This inventory was bought up by the jeweler Steinhauer und Lück, we worked, marked and sold under the RZM. Other manufacturers were the GZD7 buckles, which was marked under the right bottom of the buckle and probably stands for Gauzeugmeisterei Danzig. The same type of buckle can be found with the marking M1131 in the inside of the buckle, which means Gauzeugmeisterei. Between 1936 and 1940 there were dice truck aluminum buckles produced with RZM markings. They all had the same type of catch. 
During this period there were three big manufacturers producing buckles. Our well-known Overhof with the RZM36, the famous producer Asman with the RZM code, RZM155 and the 822 stamped buckles from Richard Sieper und Söhne. The Overhof company stamped those buckles with 3637, 3638, 3639 and 3640. It is important to note that the markings are on the other side of the buckle, under the prongs and not like the other producers beside the catch. The Asman company had their maker mark RZM 15539 or 15540 SS near the catch. The 15539 buckle from 1939 appears in two patterns. The first has a round 9 in the 39 and the other one a straight 9. Both Asman and Overhof used the rope on aluminum pieces. Sieper started producing in 1937 the aluminum buckets with the 82237 buckle, which had a thin circle around the SS runes. They made one pattern without rope, probably the first, and one with the rope, which was produced later in the same year in 1937. After 1937, you see 822 stamped buckles only with rope. In 1938, the buckle appears in three variations. There is the first pattern with small numbers and the second with big numbers, which probably was produced after. The last aluminum buckles Zipa produced had a flat circle around the runes and a round 3. In the late war period, Type 4 zinc buckles appeared. The only producer of those enlisted man NCO buckles known is Richard Zieper with the 82242. The famous steel buckles were introduced in 1940 with marked and unmarked pieces. The most common producers were our good known Overhof, who still use their RZM36 marking. Those Overhof steel buckles are seen in the 3642, 43 and 44 and were marked near the catch. Asman also still produced with their markings 15540 and 15543 for instance. Asman buckles had band prongs and were mostly coated in zinc. The marking of the 15540 switched from the catch under the prongs at some point of the year 1940. Therefore, the 15543 buckle is also marked at the same location as the late 15540 buckle. Rodo is a well-known steel buckle manufacturer which started producing from about 1943. Rodo stands for Robert Dolt and is famous for their painted buckles which were especially used by the Waffen-SS. We see them in two designs. The first type was mostly painted in olive green steel with only one row between the eagle's head and his left wing and the second type has a blue steel look where the rope is seen on both sides. There are also blue Rodo Type 1 buckets appearing due to the general switch of the Wehrmacht to painted finish in 1943, which Rodo followed as the only SS buckle manufacturer during that time. Rodo buckles are famous for their typical crank catch and the exact 45 degree angle, which may be due to the relief of the eagle's wing and should provide some lateral support against the weight of a fully laden equipment belt of a Waffen-SS soldier. There were of course more variants which were not listed in this video, especially unmarked prototypes and a few rare manufacturers. If you are interested in this topic, I can recommend a post by FMJ44, which I have linked in the video description. The website summarized everything very well and gave me inspiration and information for the video. If you have any additions, please write them in the comments, you can also exchange ideas there. If you liked the topic and the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, then I will remember this and do more of this stuff in the future. Research is everything, don't forget that.